All right, guys, back with another quick video just on how to maintain a toilet. Um, there's a couple of reasons why a toilet might keep running on, i.e. running water into the pan. Um, and we're just going to look at how you can fix those. Uh, you only need really basic tools, like a couple of crescents, and, uh, and then you're away. So, first off, so first off, uh, depending on what the problem is, you're going to need some spares. So it can range from just a really sort of pretty cheap couple of dollar underwater washer. There's a couple of different versions. That one's been sitting around my toolbox for a while. Um, then on the in, if it's if it's not that if it's uh, and it's not an adjustment, then you may have to put a new inlet valve in. Um, potentially, you can repair an old one with uh, a washer that might look something similar to that. Uh, but it can be a little bit hit and miss, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So, um, and a lot of plumbing companies will just replace it because it eliminates the risk of a callback. So, there's a sort of generic um, bottom entry valve. Uh, so, you might pretty much pull it out, stick it in, um, reconnect that bottom connection, yet, which is usually on a flexi hose and a um, bit of adjustment to the float and you're away. So, it's pretty, pretty easy. All right, let's have a look at water. So what I'm talking about when I say it's running on is this one's actually okay, but you're getting water dribbling into the pan. Usually it's just a dribble, so it's expected to have water go in there when you flush it, but it continues to drip or dribble water in after the flush, it doesn't seal up and shut off. Um, so that's a problem, wasting a lot of water. Uh, and the one that we can resolve. So first we can identify stick off that lid, take off the lid, where, where the problem is. So there's two potential causes. So, it was actually probably three. One could be the water level's not set correctly on the float. So I think the float over there. That's a bit of a funny one. But they can be adjusted. Um, and that float, if the water level is too high, this is pretty close to being too high. I think this one actually got reverse adjustment where the float is set and then you can adjust the overflow height by lifting that up, so it's slightly different. Um, but typically you can adjust the float on the inlet valve and, um, and that will set your water level. So all, all the newer ones have got these internal overflows, so it just runs back into the system rather than outside, like some of the old school toilets. Uh, so we'll just isolate the water supply. So we've got a valve down here. Just turn that off. Oh, we can have a better look. So turn that off. Oh, it's decided to leak. That's not a good thing. So just flush all the water out. Right, this was actually super stiff, but I finally I freed it up. So you twist it, pulls out, and then you can see it's actually a clear washer there, but that is the washer. So all you do is you just lift that off like that. Let's show you how to remove this again. So once you've pulled it out, so it's usually a matter of twisting and um, pulling it up, this one was pretty stiff, so you take the old washer off, some will be quite perished, particularly some of these um, black coloured ones, which is a different size, let's put this grotty grey one on just as an example, so you just pull that over, just slides on, you don't undo anything as such, so just slide that on, like so, and then you're good. Alright, so putting it back together, it's the you know, reverse of taking it out. So we've put that new washer in, stick the thing in, just push it down. And in this case, should just give it a little twist. It's very stiff. It's an issue. I might need two hands to do this. There we are. It's cracked into place there. So. So in terms of the inlet washer, if, if you're going to replace that, I'm not going to, but I'm going to replace it. You just need to get down underneath there. And there's a nut. This one is a bit tricky because it doesn't sit down through the bottom of the ceramic. So that would be a bit tricky, but usually you'll see the thread protruding 
underneath. So, so that basically sits, it's going to sit usually through the pan where you can see that thread quite easily through the system. This one, because it's attached and that's a bit short, it doesn't actually do that. But that's the way it goes. So that sits in there. Hopefully you've got a flexi or a pipe that's easy to join onto. All right, so here's your typical replacement valve. Uh, this bottom section will go through the system and then stick through, hopefully, and uh, then you can connect the existing pipe back onto it. You've got the float here that moves up and down. And then you've got the adjustment screw for the float, so you can actually set when the water will cut off as it's filling up. Uh, on this one you can also actually adjust the height of the whole stem, so you can have it longer or shorter to suit the system, and you can lock that in. And then the, that screw for the float is just like a fine tuning adjustment, so quite a bit of adjustment. Uh, if you were to decide to service one of these and cut that cap off like so then you can twist this internal part I'm gonna separate that put that out of the way and you can just oh, stiff that'll twist that'll pop out and then that's your replacement part there. Wash it. So that's the part you'd buy. It's not going to be particularly expensive. The whole thing's probably about 50, 60 bucks. Uh, that's probably only $5. Or so uh, if you're prepared to take your time, you could possibly do that. But you need the right one for the right valve. So. And uh, put it back together. Reverse of what we just did. That clips in there. Can uh, set your float up again. Push that all together. Put the cap back on. And we're done.